Praise the Lord, church. <laughs> Ain't it great to be in the house of the Lord tonight? We're going to go straight into prayer tonight if everybody would like to stand. We've got some prayer requests here. We'd like to make known. Uh, Sister Betty Gilmore did pass away. Let's keep her family in prayer. Um, Kermit Cantrell still needs a touch. Helen Sellers, Noah Knight. Uh, I believe that he's still making improvements. Um, of course, my family with my aunt that passed and the um, woman that was involved with the wreck. We're not sure of her name, but she did lose her baby and she wasn't aware that, aware that she had lost her baby. And they're not sure if she's going to make it. So remember them. Um, Jackie Jernigan, heart failure. Uh, Beverly Thrasher, the family. They lost a brother-in-law, Joey Townsend. My son, Beckham Cooper, is running a little fever tonight, not feeling the best, real fussy. Remember him. Let's remember Ukraine praying for peace. And Stevie Barnes, he's going for scans tomorrow. And I know a God who can. I know a God who can take the impossible and make it very possible real quick. So if anybody has an unspoken, let it be made known by the lifting of your hand at this time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that you would take control of this service and every prayer request is made known in this moment. Lord, I pray your anointed word would go forth into this congregation, Lord, and help us to grow in you. Lord, I pray you would increase our faith through your might here tonight. Lord, that you would let a little bit of heaven descend upon us tonight. God, that we would worship you in the Holy Ghost and truth, Lord. God, that we would seek your kingdom first and foremost here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would reach down in every need, Lord, in every circumstance, and you would show just how great you are. Lord, that you would turn it around and you would make it something spectacular. Oh, God, that we couldn't question your power, your might. Oh, but we could just adore, Lord, what you're doing for us. God, we're asking that you would move upon every person, Lord, that has a burden right now for someone or their family, Lord. If they're going through sickness, trial, or circumstance, I pray that you would show up and show out right now, Lord. Lord, we ask all of this in your precious heavenly name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. At this time, if Brother Gene would come forward, we're going to sing a congregational. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be in church on a Wednesday night, amen. It's really good to be in church anytime, right? As long as we can come together and worship the Lord, there's nothing like that. I'm going to sing a real old song, and I think all of you probably know it. So y'all sing out or eight, and act like you do. We're going to have the words up there. What about Amazing Grace? Remember that old song?
love that old song. So thankful for the grace of God. Amen. Uh, our good buddy, I think I heard Brother Brother Cade mention him a while ago of ours, Brother Jackie Jarnigan. Just got out of the hospital. He lives in Nashville. He's been having some heart trouble. And I think Keith said he talked with him today, and he said he'd like for us to sing this next song, which is, Oh, I Want to See Him. So, Brother Jackie, if you're watching tonight, we're going to send this out. Oh, I want to see him. As I journey through the land. Praise the Lord. If the worship team will be making their way. I'm telling you, it feels good in the house tonight. I've been praying all week for tonight. I just had a feeling that the Lord was going to do something for someone. Psalm 35, verse 23. Stir up thyself and awaken to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Brother Levi talked to us about stirring up something inside of us. What may be laying down deep, but we don't see, but God's give us. Well, I want to tell somebody tonight that worship is the overflow of love. So if you love God and you can't worship, something's not right. It's time we quit playing patty cake with God and quit claiming to love God and we show God that we love God. 
and let the glory of his power fall in this place. Let's worship with the worship team. presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Lord hath made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Come on and rejoice. of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice. Break every chain, break every chain, break 
Joy is not the absence of problems. Joy is not the absence of pain. Joy is not the absence of tribulation. But joy is the happiness that God gives us that we can hold close in spite of the pain, in spite of the trials, and in spite of the tribulations. We can still have a smile on our face. Why? Because we know who's for us. I want to let somebody know tonight that God is for you here tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, don't just lose your praise because they stopped playing. 
I'm going to tell you, if the only time you praise is when they're playing instruments and singing, you missed it. The Bible says, talks about the righteous, praise is comely among the upright. It's not just at church, but praise is comely wherever we go. And I want us to be people of praise. Thank you for being here tonight. You can be seated. So glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Uh, if there's any guests here with us, we are so glad that you're here. I don't really see it. Yeah, I do see some guests. I'm so glad that they are here. And uh, we've got much to be praying for this week. As uh, Brother Caden has already mentioned, uh, Betty Gilmore did pass away uh, this afternoon. And she went from this life to another. Uh, she fought a good fight. She stayed the course. And she kept the faith. And there's no greater testimony than somebody who stood the test of time and stayed firm in what they believed and, uh, and did not care to tell you what they believed. That was Sister Betty Gilmore. And uh, I am going to miss her. I'm going to miss her very greatly. Some of you may not know her. Um, she has not been to church in quite some time, but that did not mean that she did not want to be here. Uh, when I talked to her, she would tell me often, I just really want to be back in the house of the Lord. And I know she had the desire to come. And uh, for those who did not meet her, uh, you, you miss meeting somebody uh, that would just tell you their mind. Uh, but at the same time, she was a godly lady. And uh, we, she's going to be a great loss uh, from this church. Uh, but we don't sorrow as those who have not hope. But we sorrow knowing uh, that she is not, she's just asleep. Uh, but one day the Bible says, first the dead in Christ will rise. Then those who are alive and remain will go up to meet the Lord in the sky. And not just those who are alive and remain, but those who have been faithful and are alive. And I want to be part of that number. One more time, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I want to uh, preach tonight out of the book of Luke. Excuse me, didn't mean to do that. Book of Luke, uh, beginning with uh, verse 24 in chapter 7. I actually had kind of planned on uh, preaching this Sunday. But as you know, I didn't do much preaching Sunday. But I felt that God did some mighty things here in this house. I really do. I feel like he'd done some work. Uh, that I could not do and we could not do. And sometimes you just got to let him have his way. Um, so I'm going to get my preaching out tonight. Y'all just bear with me here. Uh, Luke chapter 7 verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. I would like to preach tonight just for the next little bit when the least become the greatest. When the least become the greatest. Would you pray with me tonight? God, we approach this house to praise and to glorify your name. God, but we've come to hear a word from you. We've come to hear the Spirit speak expressly to the church. And God, I pray for just the next few minutes that you would operate in this place in a mighty manner. I pray for the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost to rest in this place tonight. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit would say unto the church. God, we're attentive unto you. Speak. Speak, O oh God, for your people here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen 
and amen. You may be seated in the name of Jesus tonight. Here in the scripture that I have begun reading, uh, Jesus was speaking here. And he was speaking of not just an ordinary man, but he was speaking of a man by the name of John the Baptist. The Bible uh, tells us that Jesus was asking the people, what have you went out in the wilderness to see? If you were looking for a man that was clothed in soft raiment, you didn't find him. Because the Bible says that he was dressed in camel's hair. It says if you were uh, looking for a man or see a reed shaking in the wind, you, you didn't find that as well. But what you did find was a prophet. What you did find was a man who was unashamed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that uh, he was a prophet, but then it makes an amazing statement here that should capture the attention of all those that are sitting. It says, For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Elijah, he wasn't greater. Elisha, which had a double portion of the Spirit, we search and we find all the prophets down through the ages. But when Jesus speaks of John the Baptist, he said, I, I know these prophets before performed many miracles. And I know these prophets before did many mighty things, spoke many powerful words. But none of these men can equal the likes of John the Baptist. You may be wondering why that is here tonight. How could a man dressed in camel's hair? How could a man that ate locusts and wild honey, how could a man who was the voice of one crying in the wilderness outdo all these other mighty prophets and men of God? Well, the answer is simple. Because he was the forerunner and he was the preparer of a man that was going to come to the earth by the name of Jesus Christ. You see, from his mother's womb, his parents were told that he was going to be a mighty man. He was told that his name was going to be John and he was going to prepare the way of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was none greater than him. The Bible says that he, as he was teaching, he was preaching, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told the people, he said, I am not he, but there is one that is coming after me that is greater than I. Why was this man so important? It, it was because he was sent to prepare the hearts and the minds of the people in this day for the coming of the Lord. He was sent that there would be faith found in the earth. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 18 and it says in verse 7 and shall not God avenge his own elect which cried day and night unto him though he bear long with him. And it says I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth. This man by the name of John was sent. That way he could make sure when the Son of Man came that there was going to be faith found on the earth. There was a mighty man of God and I want to preach to our ministers here tonight and tell you that John had a simple duty and that was to look at people dead in the eyes and said you need to repent you need to straighten up because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to let us know tonight that it's good for us to pray to be like Elijah. And it's good for us to pray to be like Elisha. But if we want to be like the greatest prophet that ever lives, we need to pray that God would give us the boldness to stand up in this day and in this hour and to look at men and women and say, Hey, I'm not him, but Jesus is coming back one day. And it's time to get right and to prepare for the coming of the Lord. 
The greatest responsibility, men, that we can have is to be able to stand up and to prepare the way of the Lord. That's the greatest requirement that God has given us to preach that he is coming back. And I'll tell you here today that Jesus is coming back soon. And I come to stir up this church today and to let you know if you're not prepared for the coming of the Lord, by the time you leave this house, you need to get prepared. The Bible tells us that Jesus is coming quickly. It tells us that no man knoweth the day nor the hour. We don't know. We can leave out of this house today and the trump of God could sound and Jesus could split the sky open today. I want to know, are you prepared? Are you prepared to hear him say, well done? Are you prepared for him to say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity? There was none greater than John the Baptist. He was a preacher of righteousness. They cut his head off because he preached righteousness. But even though John was so great, the Bible makes a profound statement right after that. It's that it tells us that the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. John was sent to preach to prepare, but it was the people's duty to listen to the word of God and to obey it that they may be prepared. You know why the Bible tells us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it tells us how can we hear without a preacher and how can he preach unless he be sent. I'm going to tell you I can preach to you until you're blue in the face. But until you grasp this word and decide that you want to obey it, decide that you want to apply it it's going to be no good for you you know who the Bible tells us accepted the word of John the publicans and the sinners they were baptized by him but you know who rejected the word the Pharisees and the teachers of the law I think the church has grown too accustomed to sitting and hearing good preaching and yet not receiving and moving upon it and I want to tell you today if you don't start moving when the word of God comes forth there's going to be some publicans and some sinners that walk in the house and beat you to the punch because you sat there like a knot on the log have we grown too accustomed to good preaching have we lost the stirring and the moving of the spirit inside of us I want to seek tonight to be greater than John the Baptist. How must we do that? We must make ourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. The Bible tells us when Jesus comes back, it says he's going to defend his elect. He's going to fight for his elect. But when he comes back, will he find faith on the earth? I want to know when Jesus comes back, is he going to find you faithful or is he going to find you sleeping? I want to know, is he going to find you righteous or is he going to find you not ready? Because no man knows the day or the hour when he's coming back. We got to live with such an expectation that Jesus is coming back. Many people fought in the preachers of the old days and even the apostles. They preached with such power and anointing proclaiming that Jesus is coming soon. But you know why they preached it? It's because they believed it. And they believed it so much that they convinced men and women to get right and to stay with fear and with reverence in their heart. I think we have some people now in our churches that have grown way too comfortable living and serving God. So comfortable that they have been sleeping on the job. So comfortable that they've quit praying. So comfortable that they've quit fasting. Well, Jesus is not coming back now. I got a little time to get right. I want to tell you tonight, if you're not right in this house, you need to get right before you leave this place because Jesus is coming soon 
Not only is it because we're seeing signs and rumors of war and we're seeing all these mighty things transpire, but we must live with a readiness. We must live wanting Jesus to come back. The Bible tells us that God was speaking to the children of Israel and he was going to perform one last judgment before he released them from Egypt. And he began to talk to him and said, Look, I, I need you to go find a lamb, and it's got to be a spotless lamb. It can't have any blemish. And what you got to do is kill the lamb, and you got to take the blood, and I want you to put it on your doorpost and on the top of your doorpost. And then I want you to eat the lamb. I want you to consume it because it's for you. But I don't want you to consume it in any other way, but I want you to consume it with your shoes on. And I want you to consume consume it with a staff in your hand and I want you to consume it with your bags packed why because when I get ready to come it's going to be a time to move it's going to be a time to go somebody I want to tell this church it's time we get our shoes on it's time we get the staff in the hand because God's getting ready to take us on a journey God's getting ready to come back and he wants to find a church that's ready to go. Some of us have killed the lamb. The spotless lamb of God has already been killed. We've done that well. And we've even taken the blood and we've applied it to our life. But sometime between the application of the blood and now, we've taken off our shoes. We've grown comfortable in what we're doing. We have decided that we don't need to be quite ready as we was back then. But I want to tell somebody tonight it's time to get ready it's time to get ready Jesus is coming back Jesus is coming back the Bible tells us that there was five foolish women and there was five wise the five foolish only had enough oil to get them through a few hours. But the wise made sure they had stacked up their oil because they knew that the bridegroom was coming soon. The Bible says that the foolish were laying down and they were sleeping. And there came a time when they awoke and their light was out. I don't know who I'm talking to here today, but somebody needs to make sure that your light is burning. That Holy Ghost fire used to consume you, but now it's starting to fade. Now it's getting dim. I need somebody to apply some oil here tonight and say I'm going to be ready when he comes home the Bible tells us that the five foolish said, hey, uh, brother, can I borrow some oil? And he said, I don't have enough for you. They ran to somebody else, hey, uh, can I borrow some oil? No, I don't have enough for you. And the Bible says, well, I'm, I'm going to go look for some more oil somewhere else. But by the time they come back to the house, the door was already shut. Let me tell you tonight, you better stack up enough oil that you can stay in the house the moment you leave may be the moment that Jesus decides to come home. The Bible says there'll be two in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. There'll be two in the bed. One will be taken, one will be left. I want to tell you, I want to get took. I don't want to be left. I want to get taken from this place. Oh, yes. I've come through too many battles to sit down now. I've walked too many miles to sit down now. God's been too good to me for me to sit down now. I gotta make it to heaven. I gotta make it to heaven. Ha, 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 ha. 
God wants the church to stay ready. God wants the church to stay prepared. How are we going to stay prepared? How is he going to find faith when he comes back? It's because we're going to keep preaching about him coming back. We're going to keep preaching about heaven and hell. We're going to keep preaching that God is coming soon. We're going to keep preaching the word of God. I want our ministry in this church to hear me. As long as we live, we need to be a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He's coming soon. Make his path straight. Jesus is coming soon. The bridegroom has got a bride. I'm going to tell you, I can answer the question that asked Will he find faith when he come? He will find faith when he come. But will he find you faithful? Will he find faith in you? Sure, he may find, he found faith in the one, but he left the other. Somebody needs to keep quit pushing it off saying hey I got the rest of my life to get ready I got the rest of my life to get right with God let me tell you something today God's wanting you to get ready tonight God's wanting you to get prepared tonight and he just don't want to prepare you tonight but he wants to keep you prepared If the children of Israel had kept their bags packed, if they'd kept their sandals on and their staff in the hand with expectation of the promised land, I'm here to believe tonight that they would have no problems walking into the promised land for the very first time. But they started grumbling. They started complaining. They started looking at the giants in the land. They started looking at the wall city. I want to tell you the wall all city ain't gonna go. The giants ain't gonna go. Bumbling and grumbling ain't gonna go. But I'll tell you who'll go. A man and woman who's got a made up mind that says I don't care what I gotta go through. I don't care what I gotta face. God's given me a promise and I'm holding on to it. We got to have a made up mind, brother. We got to have a made up mind. No matter we got to go through death, we got to go through pain, whatever we got to go through, we got to make it. God didn't save your soul to leave you here when he came, but he saved you to stay ready, to have your bags packed and your shoes on. We find... That the publicans and the sinners, they heeded to the word of God. Jesus was eating with them. He was talking with them. He was communing with them. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're the ones that he really couldn't reach. He really couldn't convert. Why? Because they were comfortable where they were. They thought they had it all in order. They thought they have it all together. But I want to tell you, somebody needs to do an examination on yourself tonight and to ask God, if you came back tomorrow, would I be in that number? If you came back tomorrow, would you say, well done, that good and faithful servant? Young people, let me tell you, if you need to repent tonight, you better run to this altar and repent. Don't keep sin in your life. Don't say, hey, I'm just 15 and 16 years old. I got many years to repent. I got many years to get right. I want to tell you, God wants to use you in a mighty way. And if you'll stay prepared, he wants to use you. David is young and as ruddy and as short of stature as he was. You know why God was able to use him? Easy, it's because he stayed ready. He stayed ready. He continued to listen to his father. He was in that shepherd's field watching over those sheep, but he was ready. 
How do I know he was ready? Because when the bear came up, he didn't have no problem tackling him. And when the lion came up, he didn't have no problem tackling him. How do I know he was ready? Because when he stepped on that battlefield and everybody else was not prepared to go to war, everybody else didn't trust, David rose up and he said, I'm the man for the job. I want to let somebody know today, if you'll prepare yourself, if you'll stay ready, God wants to use you in a mighty way. Make preparation. Make preparation. Get your family prepared. Tell everybody, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your co-workers that Jesus is about to come back. Bible says some are saved by fear and others are compassion. Sometimes it takes some fear of God and some reverence of God for some people to get right. Why do you think when you preach on hell, so many people are running to the altar? Because some are saved by fear. And when you preach about grace and mercy, you got some more people that run to the altar because some are saved by compassion. But it's our job to be ready. I'm done. Stand to your feet. I don't have nothing else to say. If you talk real fast, you can get a message out real quick. Some of these brethren that preach for an hour and a half, they just talk slow. Let me tell you tonight, my God, it's my obligation. It's my obligation to tell this church, to tell those I come into contact with that Jesus is coming back soon. You know why John the Baptist was so great? It's because he continually pointed people to Christ. It would have been easy for him as he was baptizing people left and right. He said, John, are you him? It would have been easy for him to say, yeah, I'm him. But he said, no. There's coming one after me who is greater than I. There's coming one that's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He's the one who said, hey, I know you two are my disciples. I know you two like following me. But now it's your obligation to follow Christ. I'm not trying to get people to follow me. But I do want people to follow after Christ. Follow him. Follow him. Somebody needs to make that step tonight. I know it's a Wednesday night. (coughs) But what's the harm in repenting on a Wednesday night? What's the harm in saying, God, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Get me ready for your coming. Come quickly, you may say. But some are here tonight saying, don't come too quick. Don't come too quick, God. I'm not ready. You can get ready tonight. Somebody throw your hands in the air right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for a stirring of the Holy Ghost. I pray for the drawing of the Spirit of God here tonight. If there is somebody under the sound of my voice who's not ready for you to come home, God, I pray tonight that you'd save their soul. I pray tonight you'd remove our sin, our transgressions, our iniquities. Prepare us, God. Prepare us, God. Prepare our mamas. Prepare our daddies. Prepare our families. We don't want to leave anybody behind.
said, what if I preach the gospel and me myself be a castaway? I know you believe it. I know you've heard it preached. But are you prepared? Are you ready? Are you ready?